bem-vindos ao segundo episódio de Mil Palavras, or One Thousand Words, with Sergio. Today we're going to look at possessive pronouns, or as they're known in Portuguese, pronomes possessivos. O primeiro que vamos ver é o tem a ver com comigo, so it has to do with the things that belong to me, my, and that word is meu. Meu. Meu nome é Sergio. My name is Sergio. Sometimes you'll hear o meu nome é Sergio, but it's not required. Um, it's in, in Brazil, you'll never really hear that. But in Portugal, you might hear o meu nome. Um, you may have an article sometimes in front of the possessive pronoun. So one more time. Meu. The plural version of that would be meus. Os meus primos são mais velhos que eu. My cousins are older than me. Meus. Moving on to the feminine singular. Minha. Minha. It's got that NH in there, right? That nha sound. If you, if you have some help, need some help with that sound, there's another video that I have out there you could check out. Minha. Now we'll look at the examples. A minha irmã chama-se Joana. My sister's name is Joanna. Now we'll look at the plural version of that, the plural feminine, for my. Minhas. Minhas. As minhas primas são mais novas que eu. My cousins, and here it's implied, they're not implied, it's directly told. Primas is feminine, so they are younger than me. My cousins, my cousins. Now we'll move on to the you. And there's a couple of yous. There's the singular yous. Informal, informal, we'll look at those, and then later on we'll see the U plural. So the next one is teu. Teu. Qual é o teu nome? What is your name? Moving on to the plural of that one. Teus. And again, this is the informal you, informal your, uh, masculine plural. Teus. Quais são os teus lápis? Which ones are your pencils? Moving on to the feminine. Tua. Tua. Qual é a tua casa? Which one is your house? Let's move on to the plural of that one. Tuas. Tuas. Quais são as tuas coisas? Which ones are your things? So the key here, just a real quick stop here. Um, coises being plural and feminine, the possessive pronoun has to match. And if you look, everything in the sentence has to match. Quais, the plural form of qual, são, the plural form, third person plural of the verb ser, to be, as, again, plural in terms of the, uh, the uh, definite article, tuas, plural, and then coises, plural. So everything has to kind of fit. Now we'll move on to um, a word that can both be his, her, or your, um, but this time that your is formal. So seu, seu. Qual é o seu nome? What is his, her, or your name? Um, I would feel like this this one's a probably if you're hearing this and it's being said directly to you then clearly they're they're asking you your name but if it's kind of implied context will dictate this whether or not it's going to be his or her because they're going to be referencing somebody else maybe this is your your their child next to you maybe somebody's asking you about your child's name or regardless the context will help you determine who exactly they're referring to but for the sake of this video really focusing on pronunciation seu qual é o seu nome what is his, her, or your name? Again, that's the more formal version. So here's the plural form of that. Seus. Seus. Quais são os seus doces preferidos? What are his, her, or your favorite desserts? Again, because desserts, doces are plural, preferidos have to be plural as well as favorite, preferred, favorito could have also been used. I think it's like preferido is more common. Um, so seus has to be plural, uj is plural, são and quais. Everything kind of 
minds up. There's a certain standardization to it once you get this down. And it makes more sense, honestly, than trying to teach English to somebody that's never spoken English, where there's so many commonalities. The next one we're going to move on to is the feminine form of that same um, version of your, the formal version, or the his and her. And that's sua. Sua. Qual es sua cor preferida? What is his, her, your favorite color? Moving on to the plural form, suas. Suas. Quais são as suas cores preferidas? What are his, her, your favorite colors? Now these, the next few, um, refer to the possessor, the gender of the possessor. And you really want to think about it as de plus ele, and it contracts to dele. Okay, so again, it pertains to the gender of the possessors. A mein Vail Shemes Rosa. His mother's name is Rosa. I'll move on to the plural form of that. Vailish. Again, this is their mixed masculine. If we're talking about a group of people, it could either be a mixed group, it could be all males. And this has to do also with pertaining to the gender of the possessors. So, os pais deles são de Portugal. So, his parents, or their parents, I'm sorry, um, are from Portugal. Dela implies the same way. You're thinking about who's doing the possession in this case. And it's still her, but singular. So, a mãe dela chama-se Rosa. Her mother's name is Rosa. And I, I had this on the other singular one as well. Um, the apostrophe S does not translate. It's not something that, that is used in Portuguese. But it just wanted, I just wanted to kind of highlight that it's really about the, the person who's in possession here that you're really thinking about when you're applying this term. So her mother's name is Rosa. A mãe dela chama-se Rosa. Delas. So this is the plural form of that. Of there, um, and this one also pertains to the gender of the possessors. Os pais delas são de Portugal, so their parents are from Portugal. So in this case, we're thinking about two or more women whose parents we're referring to. Because again, if it's that mixed group, it would still be delas. If it was all male, it would be delas. So now we'll move on to the first person plural. Um, our, the equivalent of our, or one of the equivalents of our. Again, you got to think about it always in terms of what thing is ours when we're looking at these. This one reverts back to the, the item that's being possessed, not the possessor. Oh, uh, in some, it, obviously, it still goes back to the possessor in that we have to choose nosu as opposed to vosu or any of the other um, ones we've seen so far. So this one's our masculine, for masculine singular um, concepts, objects, nouns. So, o nosso carro é preto. Carro, car, is black. Our car, so everything again has to be in line there. O nosso carro é preto. They're all singular, all masculine where necessary, or with the exception of the verb, of course. Nosso. Moving on to the plural form of that. Nossos. Os nossos carros são pretos. Our cars are black. So again, if you see the difference between this slide and the last one, is the, the standardization amongst all of the components. Moving on to the feminine form of our, feminine singular, nossa, nossa. A nossa casa é branca, our house is white. Again, it's got to be agreement there between all. Hope as we go through, you're starting to pick up on that agreement that I'm talking about between all the different components in the sentence. Nossas is the feminine plural of our. Our houses are white, houses being feminine. As nossas casas são brancas. Nossas. Now move on to the your version, vosso. This is the plural, masculine, singular. Vosso carro é vermelho. Plural in terms of the people, the, the your, right? It's not just you, it's your, but in terms of a group of people. 
O vosso carro é vermelho. That car belongs to multiple people. That's what this is referring to when I mean plural. Because this your plural, the masculine singular. The singular part refers to the concept that's being described here, that, that's being possessed. Moving on to the plural form of that one. Vossos, this is your plural for masculine plural nouns. Os vossos carros são vermelhos. Your cars are red. Moving on to the feminine form in the singular our. Plural our, <laughs> singular objects that were being possessed here. So, a vossa casa é amarela. Your house is red, yellow. Now, the plural form of that one. Vossas. So, as vossas casas são brancas, your houses are white. And again, this is the your plural, but it's for feminine singular, in this case, plural items. And that brings us to the very end of this next episode of episode number two of Mil Palavras, Thousand Words with Sergio. Um, I hope this is helpful in helping you learn to pronounce these words. They're... We're trying to give you the, the thousand most commonly used words on a day-to-day -day basis um, in the Portuguese language. Um, we'll kind of take it in little, in little categories, so stay tuned. I hope you like the video. Please leave me a like if you did enjoy this. Um, I hope you subscribe to my channel to keep getting notifications. You may want to turn on the notification bell as well um, to receive um, updates on when videos are posted. Um, this is strictly to be helpful and in, in for anybody that's trying to learn the language, it can be a very difficult language to learn. Um, you just want to stick with it and try to engage with it as much as possible. If you're looking for lessons, one-to-one uh, -one lessons on um, your own schedule from the comfort of your home, I do offer one-to-one -one online Zoom lessons um, through my website at sapedrosa.com. Reach out. I offer a free meet and greet if you want to just chat about what, what we can do, how we can go about it, and it'll help me. Uh, put together a course that's tailored to your needs, your your level um, coming into it. And um, I, it'll give you an opportunity to ask some questions more in more detail about what my courses are like. And so, até a próxima. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Espero que gostaram. Tchau.